But if you go to campus, they might help you even quicker. And as far as it's not going to cover that. So they only cover your tuition fee and your books. That's it. Literally, that's it. When you register for second semester modules, ne? there's a big delay. As much as there's a big delay now in January to get your modules going, imagine the delay in second semester. People will be done with their assignments, already preparing for an exam. You have not received your study material. Each year, they'll give you that option. Do you want a laptop or do you want 5K? I would pick the 5K. I got it. Hey, what's up, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Bradley Barago Bazuri, I've come to Media Platforms. If you're a channel subscriber, thank you for coming back. Before we start this video, I would like to say to you guys, thank you so, so, so much for 4,000 subscribers, and welcome to all the new subscribers. So, I know that I promised to give you guys a UNISA video earlier, but I have not had enough time to actually sit down and do this video. As we are talking right now i am actually standing and i'm hoping to release this video a day before the closing of the registration which is going to be the 10th of february so i will try my very best to do so but if i can't then i am really really sorry so as per usual i have my trusted diary over here where i wrote down some notes as to what i'll be talking about today so i can have a proper clear way in which I will be answering the questions so remember today's video is a unisa q a so i will also be answering questions that you guys sent in for my youtube and through to my instagram so i'll get those questions and answer you guys and also guys please bear with me please be a little patient like life is lifing right now as per everyone's life is lifing so i can't get to everyone's dms immediately so i will take like a couple of days to answer but i do answer everyone's dms so please bear with me when it comes to that but yeah so let's get started with our video please don't forget to like this video and please don't forget to subscribe if you want to subscribe and please don't forget to leave your comments down below if you feel like i did not answer any of your questions the first few things i'm going to say in this video are things that are really really important that you need to follow so i'm going to say it and you guys please listen because some people have asked me questions that i've said several times in other videos and it's a tidbit annoying because it just shows that you guys like are not paying attention so you're asking me the same questions that i actually mentioned in the video okay any link that i'm going to mention in this video is going to be in the description box so if you need a link for telegram a link for unisa anything you'll find it in the description box please don't message me and say where is the link because it's in the description box okay so let's get started so the first thing i want to say is that guys i do not work for unisa i only share advice according to what i've already experienced from unisa as a former student so if you have any questions don't hesitate guys to email them or to call so to call unisa you have to call through this number which will direct you guys to their call centers so i'm going to give you guys the number on the screen and i'm also going to say the number for you out loud okay so here we go zero eight zero triple zero one eight seven zero so that's the call center number zero eight zero triple zero one eight seven zero so that's the call center number that you need to call in order to get in contact with people from unisa who are going to help you with anything okay that's the number either that or you email unisa you'll find their emails on their websites you email inquiry or you email this person or email that person but i'll give you this they do not answer their emails on time so your best bet if you have any question like academic question that you don't understand about picking modules or anything like that i would suggest that you go to a campus so if you live in durban there's probably like a satellite campus around durban that you can go to and student advisors will help you okay if you live around pretoria your best bet is to go to sunnyside campus and they'll help you guys that's what i used to do every time i needed help i went to the sunnyside campus and they helped me if you're in east london there's an east london campus they'll help you i'm sure there's one in Cape Town, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's one also in Joburg. I'm not 100% sure. But those three that I mentioned, I know for sure that there are campuses, like satellite campuses and real campuses that you guys can go for. Okay? So that's what you need to do. Go to campus for your questions. If I did not answer this question or your question in this video, you need to go to campus because, guys, I do not know everything about everyone's faculty or module. Okay? Please do pay attention and please do make sure that you watch the video until the end so you can get all the information that you need. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is registration plus registration fee. 
So since you guys are in the process, especially if you're a new UNISA student and you are in the process of doing your registration and paying for a registration fee, this is for you. In terms of registration, guys, obviously you go online and you register online. Or if you can't register online, you go to campus and they will help you register there. And especially if you're confused about the modules to pick and all that stuff, going to campus and actually working with a student advisor actually really does help you because they know what they are talking about and they know what to do, especially for different types of faculties. Okay, so if you are in the education faculty, which is the one that I was in, then we'll talk. Then you can listen. Then you can hear what I have to say. But if you're in the faculty of like law and other stuff, I have no clue about any of those things. I only know about the faculty of education. And also I know what I have experienced. I don't know everything because I do not work for UNISA. Let's do this. So in terms of registration, you go online, you register, enter your ID number, you enter your student number that you got when you were applying and you go on to follow what you want to um, register for. If you are in first year, you register for first level modules. Okay, so that's all you pick. You can decide where you want to put your modules. There are no specific modules like put aside for, um, let's say, first semester and second semester. You decide where you put your modules. So if you feel like you want to do accounting and English and this and this and this in first semester, you put all of those and you click first semester. And if you feel like you want to do all the other modules in second semester, you click second semester and then you continue with your registration process. If you happen to so make a mistake or you register for 10 modules and you can't pay for 10 modules, you can always go back and deregister everything and start over again. It's not a train smash. You are not limited to how many times you can re-register, deregister, blah, blah, blah. The thing is that if you keep doing that many, many, many times, your registration will take a long time at UNISA because they'll be like, oh, what's, ha what's happening with the student, you know? But if you do it maybe like once, twice, like you do it the first time and then you correct it, it's okay. It's not a train smash. I've done that before. I've deregistered for some modules and re-registered for the correct ones and everything was okay. In terms of registration fee, so your registration fee is a minimum fee that you pay for your overall studies. So in UNISA or at UNISA, they actually make you pay like some of the money that is in your school fees so you don't pay registration fee that is not related to your school fees so your tuition fee they take a little bit like maybe five thousand of your tuition fee you need to pay it so whatever your tuition fee is minus that five thousand of registration fee is what you have left to pay so you don't pay extra registration fee and then extra tuition fees no your registration fee is taken from your tuition fee so that's what you pay so you pay a little bit of a minimum per module so if a module is like 1.8 you'll pay a little bit of that module a little bit of each module until the amount is what it is if you cannot pay for 10 modules at first go you should register for first semester only and wait and then you can register for second semester because this time around they do allow you to register for second semester so the other thing is that in terms of registration fee, I know that some people are not actually paying themselves, they're paying with NSFAS. So this is what I wanted to get to. I told you guys last year or the year before, I don't even remember when, but that if you are registered with NSFAS and your process says approved or pending or whatever, go to campus. Campus, like the people at campus can help you, right? So you go you go to UNISA at Sunnyside campus and then they you ask them, can I please go to the NSFAS office, right? And then when you get to the NSFAS office, you ask them, um, I'm not sure, just lie. I'm not sure if I'm approved by NSFAS or not. So I just wanted to check um, if I'm approved and if I should pay my registration fee or not. They will just give me a student number, ID, okay? And then they'll check for you and they'll tell you, okay, no, you are approved for NSFAS and UNISA and NSFAS have communicated that they're gonna pay for your fees. So you don't have to pay for your own registration fees. I know it's a bit tedious to actually just like wait and like be patient in terms of visa because they do take a long time but you need to be patient that's that's all you need to do as long as you know that you're pending approval or whatever you just need to wait like there's nothing else you can do if you don't feel comfortable with waiting again go to campus and ask the lady at the NSFAS office what's happening with my NSFAS and then she'll explain to you what's happening and she'll tell you okay no just wait when everything is approved it will work okay so the other thing is that in terms of registration it does take a long time so if you registered if you were the first person in line to register you're definitely going to be the last person for all your books and stuff to open and for you to access your modules and stuff like that it does not matter if you're first if you're last unisa is all about patience which is not good but anyway 
it's all about patience okay so if you wait long enough your stuff like your stuff is going to happen and also remember in terms of registration dates and stuff closing dates when you can play blah 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 majority of the time you're still gonna try and extend it because they just received new students that like you know just new fresh grade 12s that want to apply they're waiting for nsfas and all that stuff blah 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 blah. chances are they might extend the registration date again so they already extended it to the 10th of february they might i'm not saying they are gonna i'm saying they might extend it again they always do that like they always 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 do that so do not panic too much so if your registration fee is not paid and it's not communicating with you, send your emails, but your emails are not going to get answered. My best bet or your best bet is that you go to campus and you speak to the student advisors and you speak to the NSFAS office because they will tell you for sure, hey, it's okay. NSFAS and UNISA are communicating and your stuff is going to be ready when it is ready. So when, when that will be, it's up to them. You just have to be patient. So that's what's going to happen. Okay. In terms of registration fee and NSFAS. Another point about NSFAS. So... If you registered for NSFAS, this is what I want to tell you guys. Go to the, you know, internet thing, Chrome, whatever. Type my NSFAS and create an account. Because some of you, when you apply online or if you apply by paper, I, I don't know which one you guys did, um, but I applied by paper for my NSFAS, right? So I had to go on the website and create my NSFAS account. So you enter your email, create your own, um, I don't know, password or whatever and all that stuff. That way you can also track where your NSFAS is. So it will show you like step one, step two, step three, step four. So pending approval, waiting for university, um, I don't know, registration letter or something like that, right? So go to mynsfas.com and then create an account, enter your password, and then that way. So your NSFAS, where you applied, wherever, if your NSFAS is already like pending approval, blah, 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 it will open. Then you can see your details. You can see everything of yours because they enter it manually on the system. So when you create an account on this My NSFAS website, it links up with your things. The next point I wrote is picking modules and deregistering. I already explained that you can pick modules. And if you don't like those modules, you can just deregister for them. As long as you make sure if you're in first year, you apply for first year modules. If you're in second year, you apply for second year modules. Third year, as it goes. Fourth year, as it goes, okay? And then also there's this thing called compulsory modules. Make sure that you register for those modules. They they got me with that because I registered for some of those modules and I forgot maybe one. And then they're like, no, you need to do it. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah make sure that you check everything so first level first level second third fourth you register according to your level so if you're in third year you do that okay the next one is about credits so if you are transferring from like maybe tut and you're going to unisa you're gonna want some credits for maybe some modules that you did right the thing is about unisa they will make you wait for 16 weeks before they credit you for your modules Remember, you're not the only student that they're looking at, right? So they take priority like over, over other students. And also remember, UNISA is all about waiting and patience. So everything takes like, if you think it's going to take, you know, twice as long, it's going to take 10 times as long because everything is like a whole process. You just need to be patient. But it's going to take 16, 16 weeks for you to get credited. And the other thing is that you might not even get credited. The thing about university is universities in general is that they don't want you to be like a third year, even if you are like a third year in your university or you came from like a third year position. No, they'll probably want you to start from the beginning. So if you are switching universities and you're in second year in your university and you're planning to go study with UNISA, blah, blah, just make peace with the fact that you might, not all the time, you might be starting from first year modules they probably might credit you for like two modules or credit you for like three modules but you still need to do seven other first year modules so technically you are in first year so just make peace with that that you might actually be starting over from the beginning so that's how the credits thing work you contact them there is a place to apply for credits on their website you follow that and you apply for your credits and then you know get on with it only after obviously like when your registration has gone through and all of that stuff so yeah and also guys remember if you go to campus it might be a bit quicker ne? if you go to campus it might be a bit quick just a little bit not too much it, it might be like 11 weeks not 16 weeks <laughs> that's quicker for you so yeah next thing is my life's email i have told you guys this before but i'm just going to explain it again for those of you that maybe might have missed it 
to claim your my life's email so your my life's email is the email that the university uses to communicate with you so any assignment dates exam dates anything that's important regarding your module date changes whatever it is they use that so you and the university need to communicate using that email in order for you to claim my life's email which means your personal unisa email you go to the my unisa website right so you type my unisa website you'll see it'll say student number password login just ignore that under that you will see it says something 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 claim my life press that claim my life right and when you claim your my life um email they're going to ask you to enter your student number enter your id enter your name surname blah 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 all that stuff that's what you do to claim your my life's email then they'll give you your email and then in order for you to log into your my life's email this my life's email is a microsoft email right so on that same website of my unit you just scroll down or scroll up i'm not sure but if you do this motion on your phone you'll see a thing that says at my life and it's an orange right you click on that and it will open this other page and you'll see um enter like you know username and then enter password so it's your student number or i'll just write it here too so you guys can see or oh, somewhere here um so it's your student number at my life dot unisa dot ac dot za so that is your username so your student number at my life dot unisa dot ac dot za that is what you enter and then your password is the same password that you receive via sms for your student number right so you your student portal login comes with auto generated um password you use that password to log in there so the password already is linked to your email somehow i don't know how but like it is already linked to your email so use that password to um log in to your email so since you got all of that you got your student number you got your passwords you got your email everything is great everything is gucci so now you're moving on your registration is done everything is great so you go and log into my life right so student number password you log in you'll see this website your name will be there you you were given an option to add a picture if you want you can i think it is important to add a picture because when you start writing exams they'll say you must upload a picture so they know that it's you when they monitor you when you're writing your exams but that's besides the point but yeah you'll see that so you'll see admin you'll see your modules you see everything in there okay that is the website that you use that is a website that is the most important website in terms of your studies so anything that you need in your communication uh, groups and all of that stuff and where the lecture talks to you guys and introduces himself your learning material some of your test books assignments blah 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 is all in there because the other thing is that yes you might click Korea study material to me but your study material will probably take like a month to get to you too so you might need to do your stuff online or you can just like download it and print it out for yourself okay so that's the website the my unisa website so that's where you go in terms of everything related to your schoolwork in terms of lectures see here's the thing it is long distance learning even though you are a full-time student because i also clicked full-time it was still distant learning even though i was a full-time student right before covid there were um lectures available on saturday and was like a three-hour lecture so you can go to campus so this you can do online you need to go to campus and you need to go where the lecture hall is so you see if you go to sunnyside right you go to sunnyside there's a street splitting the two campuses there sunnyside campus right you go to this one on your left so if you enter like this you go to the left if you enter from the other side obviously you go to your right but like if you enter from the main road from pretoria where the taxi drops you off and you see those people there with the books and stuff you enter there you go to this side of your left click your student card and all that stuff that's another thing that you need to get you need to go to campus to get your student card so they'll take your picture and they'll give you a student card so you use your student card to access all these gates and stuff right in that campus or in that side of the campus that's where the lectures are and everything is right but you need to go to this office so you go all the way up turn up you just go straight all the way up until you almost reach the end and then you turn right yeah and then you'll see an office in that office you'll find an admin lady just ask the admin lady hey are there any lectures available she'll point you to the wall and then you'll see like a big list of modules right like a big big list of modules so you go search for your own module and then you'll see which date you want to come and attend 
you see which date you want to come and attend, she'll give you a letter and say, okay, pick the date you want to attend, write your name, student number, um, which date you want to come attend or which days you want to attend. If you want to attend at Saturday, um, 7 a.m. every Saturday, you pick that. That's what you do. You, that's where you attend and stuff like that. I'm not sure if they still have that, but when I started, they still had that. Now that things are online and learning is online, there are some lecturers that actually do create some videos and they send you guys links and explain like what's happening in the module and all of that stuff. But if they don't do that, go to campus and check if the lecturers are still available. And if, if there are no lectures available for your specific module, then you have to do self-study, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you have to do self-study. No one's gonna explain to you nothing. You just have to figure it out. Oh, because you know, in, at Unisa, we're all adults and we all understand, apparently, even though we don't. So yeah, that's what's gonna happen. In terms of exams and assignments, right? So your assignments are most probably going to be online. So your assignments, depending on the module, majority of my modules had two assignments each. And then, you know, the special one had like four, but then that was like a special case because I didn't even have to write an exam for that. But majority of your modules will have two assignments. And those assignments basically count as tests, like mini tests. So the ones that went to like proper universities, those assignments for us are like mini tests. Here's my tip, pass your assignments, like pass your assignments. I don't know what system they use to measure things at Tunisia, but if you pass your assignments, if you get like 80s, 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 like 70s, 90s, you're most definitely gonna pass that module. doesn't matter like what bad exam mark you get or like what little exam mark you get, you're most probably gonna pass your exam. So make sure that you pass your assignments. Like you, your assignments are like the most important things. Don't miss an assignment. Do your assignments on time like just pass your assignments like prioritize your assignments obviously doing your assignments like you need your test books and stuff like that. my advice to you because that's what i did i don't know if it works for everyone else but what i did is i took those test books that i told you i got from telegram and i printed them out and i used that to answer my assignments so your assignments some assignments some not all of them some assignments so you get your first assignment is like a timed assignment right so that's how you you need to answer this assignment in like two hours or something like that if you don't complete it in two hours assignment closes and you get like another try but if you do the same thing again the mark that you receive is the mark that you get okay so you need to make sure that you prioritize one of those and then there are other assignments where like it's not like time restricted so you can enter 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 you can go for four days and come back and like enter 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 again but just make sure you read the instructions where it says this is a timed assignment or this is just like an assignment that is due on the 15th of november so you can have like the whole year to do it basically so just make sure that you read all of those instructions okay the other thing is that in terms of assignments now since stuff is done online you get two or three three or two <laughs> tries to do your assignments so if you didn't pass your assignment because sometimes you get uh, marks immediately or you get marks in like three or four days like because it's online generated um if you did bad you can try again before the closing date and you can improve your mark so the mark that they take is the the best one and if you did bad again you probably have like a, a third try but mostly it's two tries so just make sure that you get it you get it and also here's a tip remember those questions that they ask you because they'll repeat the exact same questions again in the second assignment yes they might jumble them around in terms of where number one was maybe number one is number 10 but remember those questions all i used to do when i was writing my assignment i'll tell you this now i had a notepad so a big um exam pad and i would write when i saw question one i'd write question one and i'd write the options and i'd write and i'd take also the option that i answered to see which one i got wrong and then i would try and change my answers because sometimes when you're answering an assignment like you're not really sure about what your answer is and all of that stuff so yeah do that do that and then the next thing is studying tips so my studying tips guys it's not a lot like there's no secret method to what i did all i did is obviously obtain test books do my assignments and i basically studied with past exam papers so in terms of working with past exam papers you want to get the past exam papers for the last three years so you're going to get for one for 2022 2021 2020 and even you can stretch it to 2019 get those papers and study through them like work through them like do the other thing is that i don't want to say this i don't want to say it no? but examiners at tunisia sometimes not all the time sometimes they do get a bit lazy and they do set the exact same paper so chances are you'll probably get the exact same paper if you do your past papers okay 
so that's what you need to do that's what i that's all i did guys and also remember you need to study ahead of time so you can't study like two days before guys this is not high school it's not high school it doesn't work like that you don't have to study you study a whole test book which is a whole semester three months of work whole test book so remember to guys time management time management time management okay so you need to study like ahead of time so if you give yourself like two weeks to start give that like yeah start two weeks study a specific module even if you're writing in two weeks then then when you write another module you have like two weeks or one and a half week to study study every time there must be like a long period to study and also when you start studying don't just start studying one module alternate the next closest module you're going to be studying study that too with the module that you're studying so that that way you balance out what you're doing so that when you don't have time anymore at least you don't be like oh my god i studied all of this this whole time and then i have no time to study this module because you're alternating eh? today you study this one next day you study that one today you study this one next day you study that one so that you can have time to balance so those are my study tips like there's literally nothing special that i did past papers test books assignments also remember go back to your assignments and study those assignments because the same questions that they gave you in the assignments same questions you're going to get in your exam they even tell you that in your tutorial book you might get questions from the assignments that you did and then also you might get questions obviously from the exam and in terms of where to get your past exam papers yourself since you don't want if you don't want to trust like what people in telegram have put there whatever you can go to your my unisa login blah 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 open any module right when you open any module you go under additional resources or anything about like extra resources all that stuff they put past exam papers last year i did not see any past exam papers the year before also it was a bit shaky they put like one or two because like i said like i said sometimes they get a little bit lazy and they don't set new papers so they take a paper from 2019 so make sure that you get all those papers 2019 2020 2022 and whatever whatever here you want to do so we're going to move on to answering questions from youtube and answering questions from instagram so i have my laptop here guys i look crazy ne? but it's fine we'll get through it okay so i'm just going to read the question quickly and then i'll answer it as best as i can and if i can't answer it guys please go to campus or call that number that i told you about they might help you okay so the first question is Hi, Elsie. Thank you very much for your work that you do and opening the room for us to ask you questions, even during our progression at UNISA. I will keep in touch. I noticed online this year that we need to book for a visit for in-person inquiries. I have been struggling with that. May you please guide. Also, when it when is it the when is the commence date for 2023? If you don't mind me asking, which course were you doing? Okay. I was doing a BA, senior phase in FET, so that is a teaching degree, so Bachelor's of Education. So I'm a high school teacher. Um, in terms of visiting the campus and you having to book, guys, everything is there on the website, right? Remember, the My UNISA website. So if you just Google, um, book a visit with UNISA, they'll show you the website where you need to um, book. So you just enter, enter the date and stuff like that, whatever. Remember right now it's a bit busy because there are new students, like, you know, the new metrics and maybe old returning students that want to go fix their stuff. So like maybe the site is a bit busy, but if you can't do it, guys, just go there in person. Like the least that they can do is turn you around, but those security guards that you need to also might help you. Next one. Hey, CC or oh, hi sis. I just wanted to ask if one can apply for a bachelor's degree using another bachelor's degree from a different institution i have a ba qualification and i initially wanted to do a bcom but because of maths literacy i couldn't gain acceptance into bcom qualification i even had to um, apply for higher certificates in economics just so i could get into bcom yes i think you can the other thing is that remember if you did similar modules that they have at unisa you need to also apply for accreditation but also remember if you apply for a new degree if you're not applying for an honors or a master's or whatever you have to start over again with your metric certificate and everything you need to uh, submit all of that yes you must submit your degree too that you did but you need to also submit your metric certificate so if your maths mark still hasn't changed i don't think there is any change in anything that you're doing if your mark still hasn't changed okay still with the youtube questions uh the next one is hi what's the best way to study for your exam at unisa Okay, best way to study for your exams at UNISA is past exam papers, use your test book, study your assignments that you did that year, and study ahead, okay? So have two weeks before, and you start studying um, two weeks before, 
Next one says, hi dear, can you please advise me on how to study for my exams as a slow learner and how to write exams online because I am very panic. I'm a very panicky person um, under pressure. Ooh, guys, um, this one is a bit tricky because remember, if you're a slow learner and if you learn longer, so just make sure every time you're doing your assignment, you're also like studying a little bit and all the information that you are um, learning during your assignment doing and during the year you retain somehow. Also prioritize writing notes ne? and also prioritizing writing down the assignments that you see online because yes, you see something online, but you don't always remember it. Like you see it, you forget it, it's gone. So whatever assignment that they give you that you do online, write it down on a notepad, write it down somewhere so that you can remember it and you can practice it and go over it another time. And in terms of writing exams online, don't panic too much. They do give you 15 minutes before to start your exam so you can look over it land through it and also give it like i think like an hour afterwards to like submit yes your submission might be late but like nothing bad ever actually really happens when you submit late so i don't know um yeah just don't submit late like on purpose but like i'm just saying like don't panic way too much about it just like be calm have your materials ready if it's an open book test have all that stuff ready if it's not then make sure that you studied like very very hard and Again, prioritize passing your assignments because if you do struggle a little bit in terms of exam, your assignment marks might actually help you and basically like add on to your final year mark. Now I'm going to start reading questions from Instagram. Okay, the first question is, hi, my name is, oh, I can't say that name, Nashupa, and I made a mistake on my NSFAS application in regards to which university I'll be attending. Instead of choosing UNISA, I chose another university which I'm not accepted into. I recently found out that I got approved to study at UNISA and I have registered. So now I don't know what to do because I'm still waiting for NSFAS to approve my application and the registration fee for UNISA is due soon. What should I do? Go to campus, go to the student advisors, ask for the NSFAS office and ask them to help you. Because if you email NSFAS and if you do all these other things, you can't do that. Unless if you can go on their online website and actually resubmit a new acceptance letter from UNISA. And then if that's an option, then do that. But if you don't have that option, go to the Sunnyside campus. If you're not in Sunnyside, go to a campus close to where you are. And if you're from far, guys, people travel all the way from Limpopo to come to Gauteng for universities and stuff. Prioritize that. If you really wanna get into a specific set of universities or whatever, you need to put time aside. You can't just do things online because they will not prioritize you. But if you're there in person, they are forced to help you in person. So go to UNISA and let them help you in person. Go to the NSFAS office and let them help you in person. Next one. Hello, I hope you're good. I am messaging you with regards to a certain video I saw on YouTube way by you explaining everything. One needs to know about studying at UNISA. Well, I am not yet a student there but i have applied for 2023 and now because registrations have opened i am kind of stuck because i really don't know what to do so my problem is i did go through the registration process to see how everything works and now i've noticed that i'm supposed to be doing 10 modules but now i check the fee quotation and i noticed that and i noticed that i wouldn't be able to pay the amount during registration also i'm still waiting for nsfas to process my application so my question here is what if NFS still hasn't pulled through by the time registration closes? Where would I... Ooh, this is very long. Would I be able to go register in June? And if I am able to register, how is the delay going to affect my studies in general? Does it mean that I have to do all 10 modules in a period of six months? How, am I how is it going to work? Please help. Woo! That was a mouthful. Okay, in terms of that, ne, don't panic, don't panic. Remember, if NFS has already accepted you, just go to campus to like make sure that it is there. And if they know, just wait. If NSFA says we've accepted you and they know that you're going to use it, just wait. Literally, just wait. Like there's nothing else you can just wait. Ne? And if you're panicking about paying your registration fee, yes, you can just register for first semester and you can register for the next semester and second semester. And if you feel like you missed first semester, you can register for first semester again and second semester. And your semester or your 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 school year will just start like will be six months delayed. Ne? So you start your new year in June, basically. So you start in June, you end in June, I think. Yeah. So you start first semester and then your second semester will be from February until May, June. And then again, you start another one Ju again like that. So your um, studies will be like six months delayed, basically. So it's not a train smash, not like a big of a deal. You just start your year, not at the beginning of the year, but in the middle of the year. 
So that's the difference that you'll make. So don't panic. If any spouse has accepted you, like you said, just wait. <laughs> I know it sounds horrible, but just wait, guys. You just need to wait. It's UNISA. That's how they work. You just need to wait. Next one. Hi, babe. How are you? I just watched your UNISA video on YouTube. It's exactly what I needed, so thank you very much. I'm in the process of registering now. I just wanted to ask you something. Can I register for my first semester modules only right now and register for my second semester module at the beginning of second semester? Yes, you can. Yes, 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 you can. Or do I have to register for all my modules now while registration is still open? My advice is, ne, this is my advice personally, ne, if you register for first semester modules only in first semester, great, go ahead, do that. But the thing is that when you register for second semester modules, ne, there's a big delay. As much as there's a big delay now in January to get your modules going, imagine the delay in second semester. People will be done with their assignments, ready, preparing for an exam. You have not received your study material. Is that what you want? You don't want that, do you? So my advice is that register for everything it, like from, from jump and then just do things as they go but if financially you can afford to do so register for first semester wait register for second semester and then you keep going like that so either way it's okay it's not a train smash but personally for me i had registered for all 10 modules at the beginning of the year because i had a friend who registered for first semester waited register for second semester his books arrived when i was preparing to write literally a week before i was writing my exam he received his books so you don't want that delay next one Mm, my problem is that my problem is that i don't have enough money to register for all of them now because yes 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 okay i just answered this question though so i just said what the person's asking now they're just asking about the payments so yes register for first semester and first semester you can wait when second semester regi registrations open you can register for second semester okay next one hi zuri hope you're doing great watch your video on youtube about advice with unisa first year students and i would like to say thank you very much very informative the reason why i'm dming you is that i would love if you could send me the telegram link telegram link is in the description box of this video and of the other video that you watched okay and then um as a first year student i wanted to have access to all the study material so i can order in order to pass the course i have a few questions for you if you don't mind regarding assignments assignments are written or s and submitted fully online or and uh, what i want to inquire from you is about during assignments during assignments is something something about a course i don't know uh, uh during assignments yes during assignments is it usually open book assignments where you can have your book and study guides and notes um as you do it uh considering that you can do it anytime before the due date or is it treated like a test where you study and write notes and you have to have them next to you when you write it your response will be helpful so it depends it, it really really does depend depending on the module that you're doing the lecturer may pick anything like they may pick anything for you so you never know so the first assignment might be an open book you can use your test book and everything second assignment might be timed so they just call them like timed assignments so they'll give it like an hour yes if you can flip through your book in an hour quickly and not miss time go ahead no one is looking no one can see you it, it, it's okay it's all right but just make sure if it's timed assignment you can't do it more than that when the one hour finishes because there's a timer they're calculating 15 minutes 12 minutes one minute left and then before you submit your answers and stuff it will close so you miss one try now you have one more try to do and if you do the same thing and you don't do your assignment on time it closes then you don't get your marks so if you can do that quickly then yes so you do get timed assignments and then you also do get assignments where you can open your book and do and take as long as you want you can take a month to answer it if you want so yeah next one hi sorry how are you my name is ella i'm one of your subscribers on youtube congratulations on your recent graduation okay i was hoping that you can advise me i am thinking of pursuing a pgce postgraduate certificate in unisa majoring in english i would like to know which one you would advise see in terms of pgce guys i did not do a pgce ne? but there is a general pgce and they make you choose specific subjects so if you did a previous qualification the subjects that you majored in if you majored in business economics and stuff and whatever your pgc obviously will colorate colorate i don't know that word uh to that so if you want to teach business economics and stuff because of the modules that you did in your previous university you need to do that so that's what you pick but i'm not really sure what to say to this because i know nothing about a pgce so i would advise that maybe you go to campus also and ask a student advisor to help you and they might help you better than what i just said 
Okay, the next one is um, Hi Zuri. Uh, I wanted to ask, do I wanted to ask where do I get taxis to Unisa? To Unisa Joburg campus from MTN rank. Ooh, guys, I've never even lived in Joburg. <laughs> but you know, I, let me tell you something. My trick for asking taxis and stuff is I ask around, hey, where can I get the taxis? So if you buy the rank, just ask, hey, where can I get the taxis? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But okay, next one. Hey, I'm Ki. Ooh, Kiyashia. I don't know, guys. Sorry. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, guys. I suck at names. I am a first year student at Unisa. I want I watched your video on YouTube and it helped me a lot. I wanted to say ask when joining the group on Telegram. Is it all for all students that are doing modules, whether it's first year, second year, or third year? Yes. It doesn't matter. So everyone that's doing that specific module, even if they're from different um, faculties and stuff, as long as they're doing that specific module, you guys do the same thing either way. If it's English 101, everyone that's doing English 101, even if they're doing law, education, whatever, it's the same module. So yes, it's for everyone that are doing that specific module. Oh, she even said thank you for the link in the description box. You see, guys, I put the links. I put the links. Okay, next one. Good day. I hope this message finds you well. I watched some of the videos on YouTube about Unisa and you mentioned that whenever you need help, something we can DM you. I really need your help. I'm a first year student at Unisa. I'll be using NSFAS and I wanted to know if somehow you know how the NSFAS allowances for Unisa students work. How much they are and if it's possible to cover accommodation. So you get 5k for books. That's all you get. That's all you get. You get 5K for books and you get your tuition fee paid for. You do not pay for accommodation at all because remember, UNISA is technically speaking a long distance learning type of university. So they assume that you are learning at home or learning from the comfort of your home or I don't know, in your own apartment or something like that. So no, they do not pay for accommodation. So if your parents can afford to pay for accommodation for you to live around Pretoria or Joburg or wherever you want to live, um, then that's going to be out of pocket, but NSFAS is not going to cover that. So they only cover your tuition fee and your books. That's it. Literally, that's it. And also, in terms of your books, they give you an option to either get a laptop, then you don't get the 5K, so they buy you a laptop or they send you a laptop, their own version of a laptop, or they give you the 5K. So each year, they'll give you that option. Do you want a laptop or do you want 5K? I would pick the 5K and buy my own laptop, the one that I want. So, yeah. Next one says... Hey Zuri, my name is Jay and I've been teaching for like nearly five years now and I've started my degree with UNISA. I'm studying B.Ed. in intermediate intermediate foundation phase. But um, like I'm so confused and nervous about everything. I watch your videos about UNISA on YouTube and join Telegram and all my module groups. The system is confusing and I feel lost. And I asked like, what's confusing? They did not say anything. But guys, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, it's okay. Just go watch a tutorial. Remember those seminars that they send you guys, like this is how to navigate UNISA, blah, blah, blah. Follow that stuff. Read all your tutorial letters. Read every, don't glance over it. Read through it. The best thing you could do for yourself right now as a first year student is to read through everything. Everything. So that in second year, you know, third year, you know, fourth year, you know. But read through everything as a first year. Don't glance over it. Don't skim through it. Read everything. Okay. So it's not that complicated. Just follow like, the tutorials follow like the introduction induction orientation for first year students blah 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 follow all that stuff it will help you really it will it will so read and follow all of that stuff you'll be okay okay next one afternoon i don't mean to bother you i just watched a youtube video advising first years i got accepted but i'm having trouble with my modules and understanding the process i'm doing criminology and it has 12 modules Ooh, child I'm not sure if I should separate them into first and second semester or I should. Or will the university do it for me? Sorry to bother you again. I hope you're having a good day. I'm having a great day. I'm just tired. Very tired. <laughs> I'm sure it shows in this video. I'm so tired. I'm filming this video at 5 p.m. But anyway, that's besides the point. Yes, you split them yourself. They don't split them for you. So if you put them all in first first semester let's do all of them in first semester which won't be nice so you split them yourself okay next question hi i'm bronwyn i don't know that you i also do know that you said you studied at unisa 
I was wondering if NSFAS actually covers the cost of the course itself or does it just cover textbooks and stuff? Yes, it covers the cost of the course, all the, like the whole course itself, and they give you money for textbooks or a laptop if you want one. <clears throat> you can't get money for both. You can't get money for a laptop and books. No, you pick one. You either get books or you get a laptop. Okay. And then, uh, also, should I say that I really appreciate you taking time to answer? Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me move on to the next one. Hi, my name is Kachiso. I'm planning to study via UNISA. So the problem I have is that I applied and registered and I'm only left with paying a minimum amount for my modules. I applied for NSFAS and I got a message that it got submitted and I'm waiting to for or I'm waiting to be approved and funded. I got a message from UNISA itself um, about self-paying students. So do I pay for a registration fee from my side or do I wait for NSFAS to pay? But I'm worried God, the closing date when is when the lessons begin and I'm still a new I'm still new to this online thing. So I'm concerned on how to navigate UNISA and stuff. Do not worry about registration, guys. I keep saying the same thing. Just wait. If you feel very panicky, go to campus, speak to those ladies. They'll explain to you what they told me, guys. Literally, literally, all they told me that just wait. No, it'll happen. Just wait, sissy. Just wait. And it really did happen, hey? Like, a while after, but it really did happen, hey? So just wait. Like, that, that's all you can do. Just wait. Go to campus if you have a few questions and you don't understand what's happening. But in terms of NSFAS, they'll literally just tell you, wait, everything will happen. If you pay out of pocket, they might refund you or they might not refund you. So that is a bit tricky in that sense. So just wait. Okay, hello Zuri, watched your video on YouTube channel, loved it. Your channel is very informative, hence this is why I'm here on IG on one of your videos. Where were you explaining in depth on how to navigate things, Unisa, as a first year student? I'm a uh, first year in a diploma in grade R. Uh, you mentioned a telegram, the link, oh, the link is in this video and the link is also in the previous video in the description box. Okay. Hi, how are you? I'm a first year student at Unisa. May you please share the link to Telegram? Telegram description box. Description box. Okay. Hi, how are you? First year student here. May you please share the link to Telegram? Description box, guys. Description box. Please explain how to join the group. Okay. What you do is that you follow that link. Download the app first. Follow the link. Ne? Download the app. Enter your details like you do on WhatsApp. And then Telegram will open, obviously, right? Then you go in my description box. Click on the link open the link the link will open and then you'll see unisa modules whatever the modules that you are doing click uh, type those modules there so caps for the um, alphabets and stuff and then the numbers will be numbers obviously and then click join it will give you two options a facebook one and a telegram one join the telegram one but if you want to join the facebook one you can also join the facebook one but obviously join the telegram one because you want to use telegram next question how i'll see i am mouth child i'll call them m they are m on youtube and i did and i did add the comment on you uh i did comment on my comment but i'm not sure if we're able to see it how does one apply for exemption for modules they did in previous studies please cover this in your next youtube video thank you hi I, um the registration fee at unisa includes academic fees or is it separate yes it does so in terms of your exemption, right, you go on your My Unisa website, click on there, and then um, go for your My Admin. In My Admin, you'll see, like, what is it? Um, bio. So your bio, all your stuff in terms of, like, examination, completion of module, blah, blah, blah. If you keep scrolling there, you'll see it says exemption or apply for exemption. That's where you click and you click whatever exemption you want to apply for, enter whatever exemption you want to apply for. So that's how you do it. So you go to my Unisa website, enter your student number, password, obviously, and then you go to my admin or admin. And then under admin, you go to, like, the bio where it will show you, like, exam, not, not exam dates, but it will show you, like, your completed degree apply for exemption change your address courier address blah blah that stuff the apply for exemption option is under those things under my admin so click on that and then apply for your exemption that way and then yes in terms of nsfas now nsfas covers your tuition fee like all your tuition fee and they give you money for books or a laptop so they don't just pay for half of something they pay for everything yeah next question uh let's see 
Uh, what is the difference between for semester one modules and semester two modules compared to undergrad year modules? Uh, how does one see if the module semester one or semester two? Normally when you are registering, if you click on the semester and you say, you put it in semester one, it won't allow you, it will just say year at the end. It will just say year. So you know it's a year module. So in terms of a year module, you write your exam at the end of the year, obviously like November, December or October, November um, examination. So that's when you write your exam. So that's a difference. A semester module, when you are doing it, you're doing it in um, first semester, you're going to write your exam May, June. So it will even tell you, you need to complete this module before May, June. It's a first semester module. So that's the difference. Second semester, obviously, same applies. You do it in second semester, you write your exam October, November, October, November. So if it's a year module, you do the assignments throughout the whole year and there might be more assignments compared to semester modules. And sometimes you don't even pick to do your modules. They just let you do it. Okay. Also, also tomorrow is a closing day for registration. Sorry for your apologies. Blah, blah, blah. With the... So, the pay and stuff. Guys, remember, with NSFAS, you need to wait. I feel like I should just title this video. You need to wait for NSFAS. Because you need to wait. You need to wait. And if you're really, really pressed, go to campus. Go to campus. Ask them at campus. Find a student advisor. Find the NSFAS office. Ask them. I don't work for you, Nisa. I don't know. I know from experience. So go to campus. Next question. Mm. Thank you. I was successful in registering for semester one modules. May you guide me as to how to check the closing dates for registration fees for registrations on modules. Registration closing dates are for all modules. They're not specific to any module so they're for all modules so if they say they close on the 20th they told on the 20th for everything not just for one specific module next question hi zuri i'm back again um at the 3rd of february the registration closes and i'm kind of anxious since my nsfas is still on step three and the nisa reminding me to pay minimum fee do i wait for nsfas or should i just pay the 6k that's a lot of money i'm not sure whether i should let my mom or my mom will be able to pay it have you ever fixed money can you unfix it before time go so i told this person please go to campus and ask the people because i've been saying the same thing i just go to campus if you can pay the money yourself you'll pay it. they'll probably reimburse you but most of the time they probably won't even reimburse you because we're like oh so you have money you can pay for a registration fee so you don't need nsfas so we'll keep your money <laughs> And NSFAS will pay for the rest. So don't pay. Don't pay your registration fee yourself. Wait for NSFAS. Wait, wait, wait. Go to campus if you're panicking. Next question. I have a question. Can you help? I recently just watched a video on YouTube and studying with NSFAS. Not NSFAS, with UNISA. I was wondering if you could send me a link to Telegram. Telegram link is in the description box, ma'am. Okay. Um, I know this is a little weird, but I'm a first year student, fresh student fresh out of high school and i have no idea what i'm doing um your helping would be very appreciated and i said okay that's it so yeah i think that's it my last remarks for this video is that guys if you have questions that you feel like i can't answer or i did not answer in this video please go to campus literally that's what i'm going to advise you to do from now on go to campus yes i'll answer some questions in videos and stuff from personal experience and from what I've done through UNISA and stuff, but go to campus. Those ladies, those student advisors are literally there for that. They will help you. They'll take you to this hall. They'll take you to this office. They'll take you to that. And in terms of NSFAS, if you are pending approval or NSFAS is there on that third step or the second last step, Chances are NSFAS already, already approved you and they're just like communicating with the university. So if you want to take your chances and wait, just wait. But if you're panicking too much, go to campus, go to the UNISA office at UNISA. They have a NSFAS office at UNISA and ask them, like, what's happening? I'm not sure if I'm accepted. Just lie. Even though you might have an idea if you're accepted or not, just lie and say, I'm not sure if I'm accepted or not, and they will help you. Okay? So that's that. That is it, guys, in terms of this UNISA video. If I did not cover anything, again, like I said, Leave your comments down below and let me know. I'll try and answer. And if I can answer your question, remember, call this number or this number up here. I'm going to write it right here. Call this number and wait. Just, guys, if you understand that you need to be patient with UNISA, 50% of your problems are just going to disappear. Just, like, you need to wait. Even on the call center, they'll make you wait for, like, five minutes. Luckily, it's, like, a toll-free um call center but like wait wait just wait just wait like wait on the call until you reach a consultant and speak to someone 
if you are so far away that you can't go to campus, wait for that consultant and speak to that consultant and then they'll help you and they'll jot down your inquiry and they, they might even help you faster that way in terms of answering your email if there's actually an inquiry because they'll go submit it to the person that's actually working with the staff. So this is the thing. If you go in person, your staff is like three times quicker compared to 10 times slower, you know? So they cut the time by like seven times or whatever. If you call, they cut the time by like, they'll give you like, so if you're supposed to wait for 10, you now wait for eight because you called. If you had to wait for 10 and you go to campus, you wait for five. So everything happens that way. So if you go to campus, they might help you even quicker. If you call, they might help you even quicker. But if you email, forget it. <laughs> it's so sad to say, but if you email, forget it. Honestly, if you email, forget it they might not even answer your email like i think they're flooded with so many they didn't even answer some of my emails as a student from unisa when i was studying with them so yeah but that is it that is it for this video i am so sorry it was like very cut and dry but i just needed to spread all the information that i needed to spread and answer as many questions that i needed to answer without wasting any of your time and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any more questions, like I said, leave them in the comments down below. And please like this video if you liked it. And my DMs are still open. You can message me. I will try and answer you guys as much as I can. But until then, I will see you guys next time in my next video. Bye.